snaps by five. AD couldn't go. LeBron dropped 26. Melo 20. Russell Westbrook added 12. The Lakers have now lost 10 of their last 13. They're below 500 and ninth in the West. King James, talk to me. So you stumped me out, cut my head off, bury me 12 feet under, then I got a chance. So that's my confidence. As long as we got more games to play, we still have a chance. You know, I hate losing. I feel like poop right now. Um, but tomorrow is a new day, and I'm going to be prepared and ready for, for the Clippers on Thursday. But that's just that's my mindset. That's just who I am. Stephen A. Yeah. Was it a mistake for LeBron to come to L.A.? No, I don't think it was a mistake at all. Um, obviously, for personal reasons, that's a definitely a given because of what, what Tinseltown offers somebody the magnitude of LeBron James. But I would remind everybody, this is a man that arrived in L.A. and delivered the championship, albeit in the bubble. Uh, some people will sit up there and say, you know what, that's not the same. I'll tell you what, might have been hard being enthused and watching the world be ravaged by COVID-19, having to live in a bubble away from your family and friends and all of this other stuff, not dealing, not, not, not dealing with a level of normalcy that you're accustomed to. One could make the argument that that was a more difficult championship to capture than anything. And LeBron James and Anthony Davis delivered. And they won the championship. And so when I look at it from that perspective, I'm not going to tell you uh, that he made a mistake by going to Los Angeles. Where LeBron made the mistake was that he embraced, he allowed his basketball acumen to be compromised by emotion. Russell Westbrook, this is not to knock him and act like he, the brother, can't play. Russell Westbrook can still play. That just might not have been the ideal landing spot for him, particularly considering the other opportunities that were available uh, for the Lakers to, to have players pair with LeBron James. LeBron James leaned on that relationship with Russell Westbrook, bought in to Russell Westbrook wanting to be there, compelled the Lakers organization to make that happen. And that is a large reason as to why the Lakers are in the position that they're in now, combined with the obvious durability issues involving Anthony Davis, which obviously LeBron James is also largely responsible for getting to L.A. So he owns the problem that exists now, but it doesn't mean that he should regret having gone to L.A. because there is a championship that has come from his arrival in Tinseltown. Okay, I, I agree with you a little bit, but overall I say no. Number one, you don't, you don't go to L.A. and win one championship. you got to go to L.A. to win more than one championship. He also won a championship off a five-month layoff in Orlando where it was a long way, 3,000 in October, when the Dodgers were winning a World Series. That's a long way away from Figueroa Street. That's the first thing. First year they didn't make the playoffs, he got hurt. Last year, they lost. To, uh, they got murdered by uh, the Suns in six games. I know Davis was hurt, but they lost. And this year, they're not making the playoffs. When you're talking about L.A. history, you're talking West, you're talking Baylor, you're talking Kobe, you're talking Magic, and you're talking Kareem. He is never going to be on that level. He's a Cleveland Cavalier. The problem that LeBron has from a standpoint of legacy is who's his team? All the great players in the history of the NBA, maybe the exception of Wilt, they got a team. Russell's a Celtic. Bird's a Celtic. Elgin Baylor's a Laker. West is a Laker. Kobe's a Laker. Jordan is a Bull. Who's LeBron's team? He played for the Heat. He's not a Heat. He's a, he's a Cavalier. And to leave Cleveland, to run to L.A. and win one title after a five-month gap, to do it in Orlando and then the other three years be a disaster, that's not Hollywood. That's not good. They're not making the playoffs this year. Teams are mad. Now, listen, is it his fault? No. I mean, we all know how great he is. But he is not winning a championship this year. And let's ask you it this way. Stevie, let's ask you it this way. If he retired right now, are they building a statue with LeBron? No, they're not. Right near Staples Center? They are not. No, they're not. They but, not. But, 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 but wait a minute. But wait a minute. Because, uh, again, you brought up history. Um, you brought up, listen, you don't go there to win one title. You go up there to win multiple titles. Respectfully. Profound respect. I must ask this question to the noted historian that is Mad Dog Russo. And when I say the utmost respect, I'm talking about who I'm about to ask you about. How, many titles, did, how many titles did Elgin Baylor have? Zero. Um, how many titles did Jerry West have? One. Thank you. What do you mean they, multiple? There are great they, Lakers. There are great Lakers who've had one title. How many titles did Wilt Chamberlain have as a Laker? One. 
and thank you very much. How many titles does LeBron James have as a Laker? One. Oh, so now, so now LeBron James, who's still playing, averaging 29 a game, looking like an MVP if his team was better, has right. as many titles as Wilt, as Jerry, and one more than Elgin Baylor. Now, I'm not saying that that warrants him being a statue erected outside a crypto.com arena. I almost hate saying it now instead of the Staples Center. Yeah. I understand that it doesn't warrant a title. But you know what I'd also add to this? Do you know who else has a title outside of the Staples Center? Do you know who? Uh, uh, Oscar, uh, a statue? Oscar, De, Oscar De La Hoya. Which is a joke. Oscar, Which is Oscar a joke. De La Hoya. So, in other words, what I'm trying to say to you, you can say what you want about it being a joke or whatever, and I love Oscar De La Hoya. My point to you is that, are you sure ain't no statue? When we talk about LeBron James, yeah, he's a Cleveland Cavalier because he played there 11 years. How many titles did he win in Cleveland? One. Now, he erased it half a century where they yeah. had nothing going on, but he did that. But then you also, he, he was in Miami. How many titles did he bring to Miami? That would be two. two. How yeah. many titles did Dwayne Wade bring to Miami before LeBron got there? One. One. How many times? Exactly. So what I'm trying to say to you is this brother going to get his jersey retired in three arenas because you can retire LeBron James' jersey in L.A. You can retire his – you damn sure better do it in Miami. You can do it in Cleveland. So, I, you know, he ain't going to have a statue, but excuse me, he, he'll, they'll have a statue for him in Cleveland if that's what they want to do. They, and you know what? And if they put one in Miami, nobody, nobody would throw any shade on that with what he brought to it. So let's pump the brakes a little bit, particularly when you bring into account he's only got one title. I know plenty of great Lakers that didn't have any, any great titles and one who's the silhouette that only had one. He was in the finals every year, Jerry so, West. So what? He got so there what? in 60. He's the logo. He was the MVP of a loss in the finals. I'm not, I'm he was not there for 13, 14 years. LeBron's been there for four years. It's not that you can't compare LeBron to West. That's no, no, not fair. No. That's no, no, not no, fair. No, no, listen, it, don't, give me, don't give me no fairness. It ain't about fair. It's about facts. That's what I'm giving you, facts. He's got, he's got as many championships as Jerry West. And this is what my point. You bring up the amount of times that he was in the finals every year. You know what, Doggy? You're a big baseball guy, man. Um, you love your San Francisco Giants. You hate on the Yankees for obvious reasons. Jealousy, it's okay. But let me ask you this question. How many titles did the Braves have? I know they're the reigning defending World Series champions. But prior, prior to last year, how many One. times were the Braves in the One. championship round and won oh, the World Series? Uh, uh, millions sorry. of so, times. So, uh, all right. So did you talk about them? We didn't really talk about them because guess what? They didn't close the deal. With no, no disrespect whatsoever to the silhouette. But I'm not interested in you hear, in hearing you talk about how many times he was in the finals. If you only got one chip, you only got one chip. And LeBron has that and just like Jerry West has it. Great. Love Jerry West. Icon, icon. But come on now. LeBron James deserves respect for what he has accomplished with the Los Angeles Lakers, particularly considering how he's playing right now. There's no doubt that about was it. Not the, that was not the point. The question was, did he make a mistake? You're right. Uh -huh. We know how great he is. He won a title. But did he make a mistake? He no. should have stayed in Cleveland. Why? Because he's a Cavalier. He oh, bought please. an Akron. Oh, no. What oh, a please. championship. Oh, please. Should have stayed in please. Cleveland. Please. Please. You Should've deserve stayed. the right to live with you. You got to be crazy. Why, why, why stay by Lake Erie when you could be in Hollywood? What's the okay. problem? Okay, okay, okay. And how do you? Let's, it's ridiculous. Let's talk about this season now. Let's talk about this season, gentlemen. So the Lakers lost six of their last seven. We know this. They're in the ninth spot. Uh, meanwhile, Anthony Davis will be reevaluated in four weeks. Stephen A., are the Lakers missing the play-in? They're not missing the play-in. They'll get in the play-in tournament, no doubt about it. But they look like trash right now. The Lakers look horrible. Um, Frank Vogel's probably going to lose his job. It's not his fault. Uh, we know he can coach. The problem is when you watch the Lakers, even though they were far more competitive last night than they were against the New Orleans Pelicans the other night, you just see too many, uh, uh, j just too many nuggets of proof of how they've tuned Frank Vogel out. If you really, really want to think about it, let me tell you what's making the Lakers sick and what should be said about the Lakers that should make Laker Nation sick. And I'm here in L.A. right across the street. I'm telling you, they should be sick to their stomach, doggy. Ty Lue, some would say, is the best coach in basketball. You wanted Ty Lue, but ended up not wanting him because you wanted to pick his staff. And this man had gone to four straight NBA finals 
and won a championship overcoming a 3-1 deficit to beat the 73-win Golden State Warriors. And you disrespected Ty Lu by trying to insist on his staff. That's point number one. Point yep. number two, one of the coaches you wanted to insist on him having was Jason Kidd, who was an assistant for you, and then you let him go instead of letting Frank Vogel go and elevating Jason Kidd. And look at the job Jason Kidd is doing in Dallas right now. Yeah. Frank Vogel's a they good just coach. Beat him. He's got a championship. I'm very fond of him. I don't want him to lose his job. I don't think this is his fault. It's up to his management. It's the Linda and Kurt Rambises of the world that Jeannie Buss is listening to and Rob Palenka, Mr. Pleaser, or, and LeBron. All of them are in on it. They all have culpability. But let me tell you something. If you wanted Jason Kidd that badly on your staff that you was willing to bypass Ty Lue, okay, why in God's name would you let him leave? For Dallas, look at the job he is doing with the Dallas Mavericks. He's got Luka playing better. Defensively, okay. they're one of the elite teams. There's no reason for it. Before Christopher gets in, though, Stephen A., you heard LeBron, right? So they get AD back. If they get AD back in a month, you still have LeBron James there. You don't think they can go and make a run? You really think it's over this year? I don't think they're going deep. I don't think they're winning in the playoffs. I think that the Lakers are probably going home in the first round because they'll, they'll most assuredly will have to play Golden State, Phoenix, or Memphis. Okay. And all three of those teams are beating the Los Angeles Lakers this year. All right, year. so you have them going home in the first round. What about you? Yeah, they're not. Steve's right. They'll win a playing game. You know, big deal. They're not, they're not there to win the 7-10 playing nonsense. They're yeah. there to win championships. They got killed by Phoenix. They lost badly to Phoenix last year, albeit Davis got hurt. But he's never healthy anyway. And they will go. They'll be dangerous. He's LeBron James. But they will lose in the first round. And again, you, he, I love Stephen A. But, I mean, West every year is in the NBA final. This is his, what, fourth year in L.A. So he didn't make the playoffs the first year, albeit he got hurt. But he make the playoffs he won in a bubble last year he got he lost to phoenix in the first round in six games and he's gonna lose to him again in the first round this year or golden state probably phoenix lose to them again the first round this year so it's four years in la one year he's not in the playoffs and the other two years he's out of the first round so let's take it easy about this greatness of lebron as an as a los angeles Lakers. he's and been in thing, 10 nba finals He's been in Tampa. Uh, in Eastern Conference. conference. In oh, Eastern come, 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 Conference. Oh, so that's what we're doing oh, now. But okay. Stephen A., when he puts it that way. What? When he puts it that way with the four years in the resume, I know how big you are in resumes. Right. Do you think maybe this actually was a mistake? I don't believe it was a mistake because I believe that he delivered on the promise. He delivered the goods. He delivered the championship. The Lakers, I would remind y'all, had missed the playoffs six straight years before LeBron James arrived, okay? When True. LeBron James arrived his first year, he got hurt. OK, right. and he missed like 17 straight games and his season was compromised. Then he got help with Anthony Davis. He remained healthy. They went in the bubble. They won the chip. Yeah. Last year, Anthony Davis was hurt again and LeBron was hurt. LeBron was not 100 percent in the playoffs last year. This to me, there's two full seasons with LeBron in L.A. When the year he won a title and this year yeah. they, and they looked horrible this year and he has to be held accountable for that. I'll give you that. But in the same breath, when you talk about Jerry West, and I hate having this subject because I love and respect the hell out of Jerry West, and I know how great he is. What I'm saying to you is this. When you talk about a person that perpetually lived in the NBA Finals, doggy, I think we have to take into consideration the fact that even though you won one, you couldn't figure out how to win the other eight times. I well, mean, damn. I, gotta, I can't ignore that. The one they won, that's probably the greatest team of all time. Okay. Keep that in mind. Okay. He didn't just win. He didn't win some nominal championship. The 71-72 right. Lakers won, I mean, at 33 in a row. They killed the Knicks. That's one of the great teams in the history of the NBA. And one other thing. Knicks, huh? When did Frank Vogel become a dope? 15 He's minutes, not a dope. 15 months. 15 months ago, he won a championship. Now we got to bring Jason Kidd to coach the team? Oh, calm down, Steve. Uh, I didn't say, Let I, him I, I coach didn't, the I didn't team. Say, excuse me. Excuse me. I didn't say that. I didn't throw shade on Frank Vogel. I know Frank Vogel's a good coach, but he wasn't their first choice. He wasn't their second choice. He wasn't their third choice. They wanted Ty Lue. They wanted Monty Williams. They wanted Jason Kidd. Frank Vogel was doing get up on ESPN. Yeah, Stephen A., what, what are you would, talking what, about? What would, Stephen A., what, what would be, he brings up a good point. What would be the difference right now? If they had a different coach, how, how would this be any different? I think, first of all, you would have had individuals in place 
that would have held the team more accountable. Perhaps they would have dealt with Russell Westbrook a bit earlier. Perhaps they would have been able to have a stronger hand involving with LeBron James and convinced him to not just go out there and want to bring his boys on the squad with him and help make a better decision. There are a variety of things that could have happened if you were not the mild-mannered Frank Vogel, who was happy to get a head coaching job and was willing to accept whatever conditions the Lakers threw in his direction to make sure he was employed, which there's no crime against that. A lot of us would have done that in Frank Vogel's position, but make no mistake, he was not a first, second, or third choice for the Los Angeles Lakers. Okay. He was doing hits on get up. All right. Okay? So you feel like and, their fate and that's how he became the head coach, coach of the Los Angeles Lakers. Because he was willing to accept Linda and Kurt Rambis and people like that picking his coaching staff for him. That is a fact. We're leaving it there. All right, when we come back here on first shake your head for. Shake your head for. You know what I'm talking about. The- for last eight games after losing to the Timberwolves last night, Steph Curry did put up 34, but was only 5 of 16 from beyond the arc. At one point in the season, he led MVP odds, but now he's got the sixth best. Mad Dog, I'd like to start with you, sir. Yeah. Uh, does Steph Curry have more to prove this season? It, to me, he does. Now, what? I know Steve probably... Well, let me... Can I talk? Can I talk? It's a little crazy, I know yeah. Steve. I know Steve. He probably wants to put him top 10 all the time. I'll buy that. He's not a top 10 player. But that's what Steve wants. He's a, he's a great Hall of Fame player, and he's transformational with the way he plays. But let's look at Curry in the big game. They won three championships. He wouldn't have won two of them if it wasn't for Durant. Durant won two of those titles for him. The one championship they won, he wasn't the MVP, Iguodala was, and if Kyrie and Love didn't get hurt, they were down 2-1. They wouldn't have beat David Blatt and LeBron with Antoine Jameson as a power forward. They wouldn't have won that series. The year that they won the 73 and they blew the 3-1 lead to LeBron's Cavs with that wonderful championship, who outplayed Curry in that series? Kyrie did. No question about it. And listen, he's fun to watch. He's a wonderful shooter, unbelievable ball handler. We all know he's an all-time great. But immortality is what I'm talking about. And right now, in my eyes, as a sports fan, when you tell me 30 years from now, well, is Stephon Curry an immortal? I look at championships, the big spots, I'm saying no. My eyes. Go ahead. Then I got some glasses for you. You understand what I'm saying? We need to check those eyes. We need to check those eyes. That's right. Get your glasses. Because I don't even understand what the hell you just said. <laughs> Let me tell you something, doggy. I, 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 I just don't know about you today. I just don't know about you today. This is unbelievable. The greatest shooter God ever created All right. is playing right now. Right. Everyone on the planet concedes he's the greatest shooter Fine. God has ever created. I'm and you're that. telling me you're not is immortal. that not a mortal status right no. there? He's a three, listen, listen, listen. He's a three-time champion. He's been the five straight NBA finals. Excuse me. And listen, three-time champion. He was on the court. And let me, and by the way, while you're treating him like he's some bench warmer that just happened to ride the coattails of a Kevin Durant and oh, others. He did. I would oh, remind he did. you, I remind you, I got some numbers right here. Seven years. This is just playoffs because we know he's done the regular season. This is just playoffs. Career averages of 26 and a half points, 26, 6, and 5. Okay? Yeah, we know that. In the, in, hold on, in the finals, 26 and a half points, 6, and 5. All right? Yes, on 38.5% shooting from three point range. I mean, I'm just so appalled. I'm just so appalled. We understand that the numbers dip from what we're accustomed to seeing him do in a regular season. Oh. I'll concede that. I'm not denying hey. that. But we're hey. acting like the dude is some bitch warm or something. Or he just on the I court. I didn't say <laughs> that. L- listen, when you bring up Kyrie, I will remind you, we might have issues with Kyrie's decision-making and some of the aloofness or whatever the case may be. But Kyrie Irving is one of the greatest talents we've seen in the game of basketball. This brother and the ball handling skills, if it wasn't for his ball handling skills, we'd also be calling Steph Curry one of the great, if not the best ball handler in Uh, basketball. uh, So let me ask you this. So all of this, all of this, we just going to sit up there and say, well, you know what? No, not an immortal. When you got that, 
three-time champion, and is known as the greatest shooter in the history of basketball. That's a mortal status to me. Do you think Magic Johnson, with a three games to one lead, two of which at home, think mm -hmm. he would have lost that series? No. No way. No but way. Can, I, can I come you back? Think can Larry, I come back with my own you question? Think, can you I think come Larry back with my own Bird. question? You think Larry Bird? Yeah, think Larry Bird. Up 3 1. NBA final where immortality, that's what it's about, with a 3 1 lead. You think he loses that series? Not Let me a tell chance. you this. Time out, time out, time out, time out, time out. If you recall, he was on the court, but he wasn't he wasn't 100% healthy for that series against LeBron and them when they came back from 3 1. Let's also point this out, too. Don't get me started. With, you know how much I love Adam Silver, the commissioner of the National Basketball Association. But that damn stimulus package that they gave the Cleveland Cavaliers, you sit up there and you, get, you eject. Draymond Green oh, from, he deserved from Game it. 5. From, from he Game deserved 5. It. Uh, hold on. The same Game 5. Listen, remember this. And, re and this is how I noticed. Because I had picked the Warriors to win that series in 5. Here's exactly what happened. The game that LeBron threw Draymond Green to the floor and Draymond Green kicked his leg up, the Warriors won that game in Cleveland to go up 3-1 and were going back to close the deal at the Oracle. They suspend Draymond Green for game five, Andrew Bogut and Andre Iguodala, who was an elite defender, and obviously Bogut was a front court defender. They both get hurt in the game five. Draymond is ejected from, and as a result, they were never the same, and Andre Iguodala didn't even come back, really, all right, because he's hobbling around, and after that is how LeBron and them won that game seven. Let's not forget that, even though Andre Iguodala played the game seven, they were never the same. I'm just saying to you, all of those things, because there's a lot of mitigating circumstances that come with why Steph Curry lost, but there's no doubt doubting his greatness. None. Do we avoid what? Game six and game seven don't count? And, and how in the world do you sit there and say, with his ridiculous behavior, Green, who stepped on Stephen Adams in the groin in the previous series and didn't get suspended? <laughs> and now you're going to sit there and he got wrongfully suspended? He got a flagrant. When he didn't get suspended? He got a flagrant. When he stepped on the groin? Oh, Are you kidding me? Kidding me? Are just, you just, kidding just, me? Just coming up That's with the where stuff. you're going just today. Coming. I'm saying to you, excuse me, there were circumstances that led to LeBron James having that easier path to ultimately win, capturing a game seven and then winning it. You're ignoring all of those things. You got your twist on it. I got mine. They should have been done in five. And they would have if Draymond Green hadn't gotten suspended for that game. And they probably suspended him that game. Because listen, okay, we all know we want to see LeBron in the finals. They were about to get smoked in five games, okay? I'll never forget that. But getting back to Steph Curry, I'm going to challenge you again. Immortal status. The greatest shooter in the history of basketball. I agree. We know who's that. Who's a two-time right. league MVP and a three-time champion. Well, let me ask you. And you're you telling me he him? has something to prove? Where are you putting him all the time then? You're going to make him a top 10 player? He's not a top 10 player. Where you are you know putting what? him all the time? I, I, you know what? I got to think about that. I think he could be. No, he's I he not. Be. I think he are could be. Are you kidding yes, me? Yes, I do. Yes, I Top do. Top 10? Yes, I do. Uh, yes. uh, let's, let's go through the greatest shoot, The greatest shooter let's go through in the history. You really let's want to do this? You want, you want to do this? Let's, let's go. Let's, 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 Can let's, we go, let's go through them? Let's go. Let's go. We got All MJ. Right. We got LeBron. No, no, no. Okay. I'll, I'll, I'll do the asking. I'll do okay. the asking. Okay. okay. You got a series to win for your life. Bird or Curry? Don't even go there. <laughs> Don't <laughs> even me. go there. <laughs> he got me. He got me. <laughs> I can't go against a healthy Larry Bird. I All can't right. go against Magic, a healthy Larry Bird. Magic or Curry? Magic or Curry? Well, it depends on what I need. Game on the line. Series on the line. The, 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 listen, Magic is the greatest point guard in the history of All basketball. Right, there you go. Steph Curry is the greatest shooter. Great shooter. Steph Curry is the greatest shooter. We're not shooter. talking what about shooting. What do I need? I'm talking what do I need? about winning championships. Game series on the line. Yeah. You got a chance. Your life's on the line. Okay. You want magic? You want curry? Don't tell me curry. You know I'm, you know you're wrong. I'm going with magic. I'm going right. with magic. You want Kareem or you want curry? Kareem, of course. You want Russell or you want curry? 
Oh, come on. He won 11 championships in 13 so, years. That's not the point. Oh, wait, a minute. wait a minute. He's never averaged more than 18 and a half points in his career. He was a it's big time Bill rebounder. Hold on. He was a big, listen, 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 listen. He was a big, listen, the ultimate champion. See, he's trying to be, get me to be disrespectful to the ultimate champion. I'm not going to do that. What I'm saying to you is Russell, Bill, Bill Russell never averaged more than 18 and a half points per game in his career, but he was an elite rebounder and defender. My argument to you is if you give me all the offense in the world, why am I worried? about defense. I'm not worried about defense. So guess what? I'm not, I might not do that. If you're going to ask the question that way, what do I need? That's why I'm asking you. One game? Hey, what, what did I just say? What do I need? I can't hear you. Hear you. Start, they took my headset off. I can't hear you. I can't hear you. Can, you can hear me. You can hear no, me loud and clear. It dropped. It dropped. I am tired of this I'm nonsense. Not, you not, can't I'm, put him ahead of Bird. You can't put him ahead of Magic. You can't put him ahead of the three centers. Dog, you, you can't put him ahead of Jordan. Him. You cannot put him ahead of LeBron. You can't put him ahead of Tim Duncan under any circumstances. Yeah. You can't put him ahead of Tim Duncan. And you can't put him ahead of Kobe. That's eight, nine guys right there. You want me to go to Nowitzki? You want me to go to Wiss? You want me to continue? How Don't go to the whiskey in them. Don't go to the whiskey in them. But he does have me on those vegetables. Okay, but how he am I supposed to wrap him? He has no earpiece. <laughs> Producers, can you we tell him we're going to I got to get my headset back on. Yes, well, we'll take a timeout. That was, that was incredible, he guys. He kind of got me there. That he kind of got the group and figure out how we're going to move the process forward. Good morning. Welcome to First Take. Thank you so much for being with us. It is Wednesday, so you know what that means. Christopher Mad Dog Russo looking very dapper, sir. So good to see you coming from the East Coast. And Mr. Smith. How are you? I'm excellent. I like this. We coordinated a bit today well, with the pink. A little bit, a little bit. I just want to say always happy to have my man Mad Dog Russo on. I see he's clean shaven, which is a great, great thing. Yeah. But let me be very, very clear. The person that's looking dapper this morning would happen to be me. I just wanted to oh. say that. Okay. Oh. Let's go. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Let's go. See, Christopher, Christopher, I thought he was going to actually compliment me there, but I should know better. Let's go. Exactly. He complimented me. I love that. <laughs> uh, would, you like me, would you like me to start the baseball? Let's start the baseball. You no, want a little no, take no, on no, that? No, no, no. We're going to do it now. We're going to do it. We're going to get to the latest on Major League Baseball. Two words you don't want to hear. No deal. The first two MLB regular season series have been canceled after players reject the league's proposal. Commissioner Rob Manfred announced the sport will lose regular season games over a labor dispute for the first time in 27 years after talks collapsed in the hours before management's deadline. Here's Rob Manfred and Union Chief Tony Clark with more. The clubs and our owners fully understand just how important it is to our millions of fans that we get the game on the field as soon as possible. To that end, we want a bargain and we want an agreement with the Players Association as quickly as possible. The um, entertainment market today is different than 1994. My deepest hope is that um, we get an agreement quickly, we're back on the field and you know we get back into that market and compete effectively. Players want to play. We, we all know that. But the reason we're not playing is simple. A lockout is the ultimate economic weapon. In a $10 billion industry, the owners have made a conscious decision to use this weapon against the greatest asset they have, the players. But the group won't be intimidated. I've seen more unity over the last few years than at any time in our recent history. Okay, Christopher, tell me this. Which side looks worse? Is it the players or the owners? Well, listen, Manford is the one who's going to get slaughtered here based on the idea that he is the steward of the game. He's the commissioner. He's supposed to be above it all. So he is the guy that, at the end of the day, the blame is going to fall. Nobody knows who Tony Clark is. Nobody knows who Bruce Meyer is. Max Scherzer's a pitcher. He's not a laborer. He's not a negotiator. Scott Boris is very much involved with this. He's got five guys on the executive committee. He's not even in the meetings, but believe me, he knows exactly what's going on. He gets text messages and phone calls 
constantly. But here is the bottom line. They signed the players, and they made the deals, and Manfred probably should have left the table giving them more. But they signed two bad deals. Tony Clark, the last one was awful, very pro-owner, and the players got slaughtered in 2016. Mercy rule. 10-1. So as a result of that, they have sat here, heard all the criticisms of how they did a bad job at the negotiating table. Tony Clark, of course, number one there. He signed off on it. And as a result, they've been dying for their pound of flesh. So I don't care if God was negotiating this latest deal with them since December. The bottom line is they want a fight. They want a war. They're very competitive. They're tremendous athletes. They're, they're great baseball players, and they're used to winning. And they're used to being on a high level here, and they know they got burned last time, so mm -hmm. they're going to fight to the bitter end. Now, as a result, at the end of the day, I don't think they can win, because who has more money? Uh, Steve Cohen, who's worth $13 billion, mm -hmm. or mm -hmm. some utility infielder for the Mariners who's making 600000 Cohen does. So at the end of the day, I don't think there's a way that they can win. But mm -hmm. the issue really is, to me, is that the players want a war based on the last couple of CBAs. CBAs that they signed off on. And one last thing quickly before Stevie takes over and runs it. Mm -hmm. Forget the lockout. If they didn't do a lockout, the players would have strike. I got an idea for the players. All right, no lockout, you don't strike. In 94, they didn't do a lockout. Players struck, and we lost the World Series. So this idea that the player, that the owners locked them out is a bunch of is nonsense, because if they didn't, the owner, players would have struck in the middle of the summertime, mm -hmm. and we would be mm -hmm. still in the same situation. Mm -hmm. So that's a bunch okay. of nonsense. Hopefully, we'll get this settled down the road. We see. Well, see, see let, 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 let me say this. Let me say this. You you know, I know a lot of people over at Mad Dog Radio, especially my man Steve Torrey. Good, good, good morning to him. I hope he's watching. And what I hope he does is get a gurney for you today because you're going to need it, Mad Dog. You're being slick. And I want to tell you something right now, Mad Dog, right here, right now. See, you're at a decided disadvantage, but it clearly isn't because of your Major League Baseball knowledge. I know who I'm talking to. I know who I'm listening to. I know when I want to listen to my baseball. It ain't just the great Tim Kirkjian and Jeff Passan and guys like that, you know, Buster Oldies and those guys that I listen to. I also listen to Doggy and the people that he has on. And I've been listening to you since the 80s, my brother, the 80s. And I have never, ever once heard you Come to the defense of the players. You'll give this perspective. You'll make sure to break. But you always sit up there and talk about, hey, you know what? They were strike, strike, strike. Stop it. This situation is on the owners. Now, the players might take the hit because at the end of the day, when Matt Scherzer signed a three-year, $130 million deal, or he's getting $43.3 million this year from Steve Cohen, or you know what? Somebody like Mookie Betts is the 32nd highest paid player in Major League Baseball, and he's at $22.5 million. We're going to look at him, and we're going to say, oh, the players are just fine. It's greed, it's greed, it's greed. But I would remind you, I've got an article right in front of me, reading on ESPN.com. And there's a particular little graph, a little sentence, the little, the two sentences within the graph in this ESPN.com article, doggy, that I really, really wanted to highlight because to me it crystallizes what the owners do. It says here, the league waited three months, three months to counter the union's first core economics proposal, then another six weeks to circle back after imposing the lockout in December. Now, as a person who has covered collective bargaining negotiations, particularly in the NBA since the mid-90s, since 1995, that would be me. You know what that strategy seems like to me, doggy? It seems like an ownership group. Obviously, the face of it is the commissioner who answers to them, who wants to create a situation where they ultimately get to impose a final offer that the players must capitulate to, and by then, what will happen is the players will say no. As a result, they strike, and you got cats like Mad Dog Russo talking about, the player struck, the player struck. These guys ain't trying to make a deal. They're not trying to capitulate, and here's the proof. COVID. These owners lost a boatload of money. They trying to get it back. That's what they're trying to do. Players have been losing salaries for the last four years. That's what y'all tell me. 
I saw Tim Kirkja last night talking about how revenue's down, ratings down. I don't need Tim Kirkja or anybody else to tell me about how the popularity of the sport has dissipated dramatically in comparison to major to the National Football League, to the NBA, clearly to college football as well. It might not be the fourth most popular sport in, in, in America right now. This is what, what was once America's national pastime. So all I'm saying to you is this. While you're talking and bloviating about the position of Major League Baseball owners and how Commissioner Rob Manfred is going to take the heat or whatever, let's understand that while the players can't be completely absolved because you're clearly trying to make up for bad negotiations in the past. In the end, the owners are far from innocent. They've been playing the game. You can make an argument. They have never come to the negotiating table with good faith. And when Tony Clark talks about what the M what Major League Baseball owners are trying to impose, even though he might need to do a better job, and I don't know because I didn't cover collective bargaining negotiations, so I don't know about Tony uh, uh, Clark in that regard. But the bottom line is he ain't wrong about what he's saying about these owners and Commissioner Rob Manfred. Their hands are dirty in this, and how they've handled these negotiations are proof of it. They don't even have a scheduled meeting coming up. Well, two things. First off, you're right. I have been pro-owner since 1981. So I'll yes. give you that one for a change. I got one right. 1,000%, 100%. I'll give you that. At 2.30... On Tuesday night, they had met all day. They were close to a deal. Word leaked so, out. You know who told them to get out of that meeting? Don't make a deal. Boris. 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 He In always does. Newport. Boris. He Boris. always does. They were this close. They left the meeting at 2.30, and all of a sudden they came back the next day with a different set of parameters. One other thing, Stephen. Mm -hmm. You know... That on the owner's side, who's going to make the deal? Manfred is. He's the spokesman. He makes He's, the deals. He's made every deal since 98. Then He's why never was he late the to the party? How come Hold he hasn't now. been at the negotiating table from, the, from Jump Street? He has never lost a game in 22 years as a lead negotiator. Who makes the deal for the players? Is it Tony Clark? Absolutely not. He made a terrible deal last time. Bruce Meyer? Who makes the deal? Is it Boris? Is it Max Scherzer? Whoa, 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 Is it whoa. Andrew Miller? Hold on, hold on. Let me interject. Who do the owners go to, to the players and say, guys, Wait a minute. who is the person who can make can I your answer? deal? I got my own question. I'll answer with my own question. How dare you sit up there and act like Rob Manfred ain't in the same position? You got small market owners in Pittsburgh. Places like Kansas City, maybe right. Arizona, that's, that's clearly on the opposite end of the spectrum than a Steve Cohen or the Steinbrenners in New, in New York or the Dodgers in L.A. So you got small market owners that going to hold the line. They're going to be diehard. They're going to be rough and rugged with their approach. And Rob Manfred has to find a way to maneuver his way through that terrain to get them to go, to go on his side. But the first order of business is this. When I bring up the time, how the hell it take you three months? to answer the union's uh, initial economic proposal. How the hell it takes you an additional six weeks, you know, since the lockout? Are you kidding me? You're not Steve. trying to make a deal. You were trying to miss games. This is Steve, what you want. they had 10. They spent 10 days in Port St. Lucie. The deal was this close, 235 on Tuesday night. The players left Do you really Roger believe that? Dean Stadium. They were right really? there. Do you they really believe right that? They were right there. Do you really believe that? I, yes, I, I, I do. promise you. Listen, listen, yes, I, I do. Listen, hold on, on. I listened to Mad Dog Russo yesterday. I knew what you were going to say. I'm going to listen to you today when they call up on your radio show. You know good and damn well at least 60 to 75 percent of your callers don't believe that it was close. They knew that this. They they knew that something was going to go wrong because this is what they do. If you lost the the millions upon millions of dollars that any owner could speak of that they lost because of COVID 19 and how it's ravaged the world of of course, the world of sports, you know, they lost money and they were hell bent on getting it back. And if you took a cat to school with the previous two negotiations, as purportedly happened, I don't know if it's true about Tony Clark, but purportedly that happens. If that happened and you took them to school and you didn't have the mindset and the decency and just and just the foresight to say, yo, you got to give them a bone. I can't completely destroy them because I got to work with these brothers once this negotiation is over. And you That's weren't fair. smart enough to do that. And you That's were fixated fair. on the fact that you're not knocked them down, That's and you fair. knew you did it before, you know you could do it again. Okay, okay, okay. Mad Dog, last word here. Go ahead. 
Last word is that this is going to last a while. Players wanted the war, and now they're going to get one. They lost oh. opening day. Oh, if you it. get baseball prior to May 1st, I'd be shocked. Well, I'll say this. Prior to May, okay. May April 15th, yep. obviously, is usually that was the target date. Yeah. And I think I was listening to Eduardo Perez mm -hmm. uh, 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 this, th this morning talking to Steve Phillips, and he was talking about how, um, you know, Jackie Robinson, it's, they you celebrate yeah. the major league major league baseball celebrates Jackie Robinson. You mm -hmm. go out there and play. Everybody's got the number forty two jerseys on and all all, all of this stuff. Mm -hmm. That stuff is important as well to a lot of minorities, particularly in the sport of baseball. And when you are a sport that has suffered to ingratiate yourself with the younger demo, and you certainly have struggled to ingratiate yourself with at least the American minority community, to have that day push back and to all of a sudden compromise that doesn't help either. It <laughs> All right, let's get to the latest on Major League Baseball. Two words you don't want to hear. No deal. The first two MLB regular season series have been canceled after players reject the league's proposal. Commissioner Rob Manfred announced the sport will lose regular season games over labor dispute for the first time in 27 years, and talks have collapsed in the hours before management's deadline. Christopher? Yeah. Starting with you. All right. Is MLB risking becoming completely irrelevant. Oh, absolutely. And you're talking to a, a, a guy who's been following baseball since the mid-60s, who loves it. Stephen A. knows that. Uh, I, I love the game. And I'll go back. You know, it's not like I'm going to forget about it August night. I'm going to watch baseball. I'm going to go to games. Uh, I'll probably go to the All-Star game. I'll go to the World Series. You can't go by me. Because I, I, I'm, I'm, I don't count. But this strikes, this lockout is going to last a long time. Uh, I don't think either side, especially the players in my eyes, realize uh, the, you know, baseball players don't think where they stand in the national sports landscape. I think they're risking, you know, as you said, you know, nobody's going to care about them when they come back on June 1st. Think about it for a second. If mm -hmm. baseball comes back on June 1st, you got yeah. the NBA postseason and you got the finals. Stevie would be all over that. The six people out there at the hockey, that's always fun, the Stanley Cup final. You got golf, you got tennis, you got warm weather, you got outside, and now baseball. Hey, here we are. Let's, we're all back. Let's go. Two months away from training camps in the National Football League. Are you kidding me? That's not going to make it. And remember, Opening day is a special day for a lot of us in the sport. It, it's springtime. It's hope springs eternal. It's warm weather. It's bunning on the ballparks. It's the flyovers. It's 50,000, 162 games. You know, baseball at its best is like a book. Each chapter is like a new month. And, it, and you have to read the whole book to see the conclusion because baseball lasts forever. It's that kind of sport. You lose opening day, you're going to lose a lot of that. And to jump in on May 11th, hey, we're here. People aren't going to pay attention. No, I will. Forget me. People and I, my kids aren't going to pay attention to it. I got big sports fans who are kids. They love the NBA. They love college basketball. They're not going to pay attention to it. Dad, where's baseball? Well, I don't know where it is, Tim. I'm calling. I don't know. When they come back, uh, Tim, I don't know. Maybe July 4th. I don't know. That is something that they do not realize how dangerous that is. And remember, this is not a scenario here. I heard Steve say before, college football, the NBA. And the, this is a situation where baseball is in trouble to begin with. Their TV ratings on the national level sometimes are very, sl very sloppy. You know, the, they uh, in, in the middle of August and September, the teams that are out of it, Pittsburgh, Kansas City, all these ball clubs, Miami, Arizona, there's a million of them. They don't pay attention. The World Series ratings aren't very good. There's no parity. Every year, you know, there's only about seven or eight teams that are going to win it. This is a major, major problem. And I and remember, here's another thing. I, I shouldn't go too long here. You got to get Steve a chance. Here's another thing. The game itself is a disaster right now. There's too many strikeouts. The game lasts forever. You got a million guys coming in from the bullpen, throwing 100 miles an hour. Nobody can hit the ball. The game's a game in the middle of June between Astros and White Sox. Takes three hours and 45 minutes to play. That's boring as all can be. There's too many. There's not enough balls. In it. There's too many things. They haven't even fixed the on-the-field issue. So baseball, and this, I hate to say this. I hate to say it. Baseball right now is in, this is worse than 94 with the World Series. Baseball right now is in major, major trouble. <sighs> What's the matter? Well, don't cry over there. I'm, I'm, Relax. Just, I'm just, you I'm just touched. I'm just touched. I Why? mean, we finally agree.
it's just, it's just, this is a very touching moment for me. I, ne I never thought that it would come to this, but, but I don't disagree with anything that Doggy said. And then he got me the last debate. Enjoy that moment. It won't happen again. So enjoy that moment. Hold on, hold on to the moment of that last segment. It won't happen again. But in regards to this, Doggy's absolutely right. Baseball's in major, major, major trouble. And this is the thing. Revenue's down. Ratings are down. Those national ratings he was talking about. Yeah. You have not ingratiated yourself with the younger demographic, with minorities in this country. You haven't done it. And I'm not saying baseball hasn't tried. You've got the RBI program, like reviving baseball in the inner cities that they've been doing for years. Guys like Mark Teixeira and others were big on that. Doggy, I know about that. But nevertheless, they never were quite successful in getting that number of, of black individuals in the sport of baseball higher than 7 or 8%. Mm -hmm. And then when you look at this situation right now tra transpiring, I hearken back to the cancellation of the World Series in 1994. I would remind everybody that they didn't really begin resurrecting itself until McGuire and Sosa were chasing Roger Maris' single-season home run record. Everybody keeps forgetting. They acting like that was 1995. No, it was 1998. That means 1995, 96, 97. You have people who were down on the sport. Some right. people say that contributed to the elevation of the National Football League when you're talking about America's national pastime, turning off an audience. So we've got that issue to go on. Then we went into the particulars starting off the show, Doggy, when we talked about how, excuse me, you talked about the owners and you talked about the players, and we looked at, and I'm looking at guys like a Mookie Betts making 22 and a half million. He's the 32nd highest paid player. I'm looking at guy like Ar uh, guys like Arenado and others that are getting paid exorbitant amount of dollars. I'm looking at the Grom and Scherzer both get paid over 35 million dollars. Or in the Grom case, I think it's 33 to 35. Scherzer's at 43.3 million dollars. Folks, the average folk out there didn't want to hear it back then. How you All feeling right. now? that people have been losing their jobs because of COVID and, uh, and, and, and how it's ravaged our nation and the globe. So all of those things taken into consideration. To miss games now, crying with millionaires and billionaires fighting, that is a bad look. But I will tell you what could save it, okay. what could help, rather. Derek Jeter, baseball needs an ambassador. They need somebody to sell and market the sport, not just to the younger audience, but to sponsors and advertisers in a fashion that they'll get assistance in helping the sport ingratiate itself with a younger demographic because the baseball audience is getting older and older and older. Those true avid followers like Doggy, you're not going anywhere. But the problem is you ain't getting younger. And their audience is not getting younger. Let me get in here, because you made a lot of great points. And Mad Dog, I, I've asked Stephen A this many times, and I'm glad we have you today. And I love the idea of Derek Jeter, really, as the ambassador. Christopher, how do they fix this? How do they make it relevant to the younger audience? Because we all know it's a great game. We all grew up with it. And it's a shame, even on this show, I, I hate that we don't talk about it the way that we could be. So what can they do? Well, the first thing they have to do, Molly, is they have to fix the product on the field. The games mm -hmm. are too long. Too There's long. too many relief pitchers. There's too many strikeouts. The shifts. Everybody hitting the ball out of the ballpark. The game is a, uh, is a slog sometimes to get through these games. And there's too many of them, 262 in this day and age. So that's number one. And they, they did not even go near those issues as far as this agreement is concerned that they didn't get. They didn't even have a scenario. How about a pitch clock? Pitchers taking 40 seconds to throw on the ball to the plate. Guys stepping out of the box taking forever. I mean, that's not entertainment. This is the entertainment. That's why I'm out of here. It's entertainment. Doggy, can I throw this at you? This is entertainment. They're not entertaining enough. Can, can I throw this at you, Doggy? Seriously, this is, a, this is a question, but I believe they should do this. I believe, I love the fact of more teams in the playoffs. I do, too. But, I, but I'm an advocate of there being less regular season games. I think the number should be reduced from 160, 162, I'm sorry, to 140. I agree. To 140 or 142. I think if you, take, if you subtract 20 games, 20 to I 22 agree. games during now, the regular season, but get an additional 12 to 14 games in the postseason, I think that works for the sport. What are your thoughts? Because you should. I you, agree. You, no, here's, right? for here's, season should end Labor Day. Season should end Labor Day. I agree. Here's the problem with that. Right, right. You play 140 games, that's 70, that's 10 less gates for the owners. They're going to want to split that lost revenue. Are the players going to take less the money? Overcharging the postseason. 
Oh, the, the Chargers in the postseason. But the, not every player plays in the postseason, so they're not going to get paid. So all yeah. of a sudden, the players want to get yeah. paid for 140 games instead of 162. Right. Are they going to take a haircut? Yeah. Yeah. You yeah. know they won't. Yeah. No, I know they won't. I do know they won't. I it's propose true. an idea. Right. You know right. what maybe we should do right. next Wednesday when we have Mad Dog with us? You know how you do the Stephen Zay list? Yeah. Let's have Mad Dog do a list on how to fix baseball. I think he can go through and do one. He'll probably sell it better than you. And, no, and the- no. I think that Mad Dog's going to be entirely too emotional. You understand? And he's going to throw stuff up there and want us to defer to the days uh, uh, of Kennesaw Land, Mountain Landis and, and, you know, all Joe of that Maggio, kind of stuff. And, and people are going to be like, what the hell is he talking about? That's the problem. I don't trust Mad Dog with an A-list. I don't trust Okay, him. enough with both of you. Let's get to my sport. That's football. Coming up, either the Packers GM's phone is on do not. Okay, I want to add this. Uh, Cars legend Larry Fitzgerald's father, who is a sports writer, Larry Sr., tweeted this. He said he's spoiled, brings his Oklahoma offense to the NFL team, has to catch up, great talent. He's never been humbled. Keep working. Mm. Okay. Mad Dog? Does Kyler deserve a new contract? uh, Absolutely not. Oh, my God. First off, why? He's not going anywhere. Pay him on his contract so I can give him anything you want. Let him, let him play for his supper, for crying out loud. And did anybody see that performance against the Rams when he was downright atrocious and then wanted out of the game in the last minute or so and Colt McCoy had to go on there and play? You think Montana or Brady in a blowout in the playoffs said, hey, you know what? White flag, get me the heck out. Put somebody else in. That was a disgrace. Plus, there's all these reports that a lot of these teammates don't love him. He's got a lot to prove. Plus, he's been hurt a lot. Oh, I, I, listen, I'm, I, know, I know Steve doesn't like uh, uh, Kingsbury, and he's not Sid Gilman. Look him up. He's not Sid Gilman. I, I get that. He's got a lot to prove. But the idea now that we're going to run out there and go pay Murray $40 million off that awful performance against the Rams and some off-the-field issues and work issues, absolutely no way. They'd be idiotic if they paid him. How's that? Well, Idiotic. The- and you should be ashamed of yourself for saying something like that. I'm just, I can't believe some of the stuff coming out of your mouth. First of all, and I understand if you sat up there and said don't pay him $200 million or something like that, I get it. But don't pay him at all? What's he supposed to do? This guy's the starting quarterback for the Arizona Cardinals who won 11 right. games last year. His first year, before the year before he arrived, they won three games. His first year, they won five. His second year, they won eight. Last year, they won 11. There's a three-game improvement each year with him as a starting quarterback. If you were so concerned about him, what the hell are you bringing a rookie quarterback, uh, a rookie head coach that never did anything in the NFL before? And by the way, me being down on Cliff Kingsbury, I'm not down on him. I thought he did a nice job last year, to be quite honest with you. My issue is I believe in process, doggy. That matters to me. You got black, you got white coaches, you got, you got all types of coaches that paid. The- we heard about it once he was asking for his money. Doesn't that strike you as a bit suspicious? Doesn't that get those spark ears of yours percolating and saying, wait a minute, there's something awry here. There's something missing. Right when it's time for him to say, okay, I want to get paid. Now we're hearing about character Hunter, issues. You're, you're Don't you an find athlete. that suspicious? You're an athlete. You're telling me you're pleased with him taking himself out of that no. Ram wildcard no. game? No, I'm you not saying that You don't do that as a quarterback? He, he looked you atrocious. You don't do that as a QB? Look, hold on, wait a minute. He looked bad. I got that. I'm not disagreeing with you there. But your body of work does matter. You've seen the improvement from him over the years. You've seen the team improve. You're going in a forward direction with him, no doubt. You see the way the game is played and how being a dual threat from the quarterback position is pivotal. And all of a sudden, Steve Kahn, who basically made the wrong the year, the same year he got rid of Steve Wilkes was the same year he got rid of Josh Rosen. I mean, he drafted a quarterback and hired a coach and in right. one year knew he made the wrong decision and then comes back with Kyler Murray and Cliff Kingsbury and we're going to sit up here and look at a guy that's 24 years old that might be temperamental, that might need to be humbled, that might need to be checked to some degree and we're going to use that as an excuse Excuse not to pay him. Well, Come he's on, doggy. Paid? Well, well, what is he paying for? A hundred dollars a game? I mean, he's not playing. He's getting paid. What are we supposed to do? Write him a check for three hundred and fifty million? He's not Aaron no, Rodgers. No, 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 no. I mean, no, let's no. take but it I easy. This, hold on, take it away a couple much. of years. In today's NFL climate, Kyler Murray is worth at least twenty-five to thirty million a year. 
Yes, he it is. It kills. It hurts their salary cap scenario. So what? Why pay him but, so much money now? Because he when produces. You can use that money? Why? He produces. He ain't losing. He missed. A, how many games did he miss this year? He I missed about four was, or five games. I think about four Colt games. Colt McCoy was in there playing well. He missed. He missed four games. He missed four, four games. games. Three games, games, actually. How it's many games did he miss the year before? How it's many games did he miss the year before? Hold on. Three or he four games? He played all 16 games. He played all 16 games the year before. No, he didn't okay. start in week no, 17 against the Rams. He played, eight. He played eight. I'm sorry. He played eight. That's right. Okay. Mad Dog, let me ask you this. Do you think – No, he did play all 16. He had – this year was the first year he missed the game. I got it right here. No, he he didn't. No, he didn't even play week 17. He had a bad ankle. They played the uh, other the kid from Fordham at quarterback against the Rams. This guy's got a Rams. memory like an elephant. Don't even try it. I got he, it right he knows, here. He knows it all. It's not. Kyler Murray in 2019 and 2020 did not miss a game. He missed the wait, game. Wait, wait, he missed wait, three wait, games wait, wait, this wait, year. Wait, 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 wait. Because I like doggy, as you like to call him. Uh, quarterback rankings. Is Kyler Murray a top 10 quarterback? No. Absolutely not. Yeah, if, I t if two weeks ago I said Prescott's not a top 10 quarterback and he, of course, has won some playoff games, how do I put Murray on that level? He oh, is you not think, a top you, wait, 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 wait. Well, you think Prescott is better than Murray? I think right now, based on right what now. I've seen, body of work, I'd have to take Prescott. Yeah, I would too. I would too, for now. For now. I would too. I'm not going to deny that. And I think Kyler Murray's miniature status in the pocket hurts him. I think if he was a little bit taller, I think that would help him immensely. But but even though Prescott can run with the football, Kyler Murray's on a different level in that regard as well. I think he needs to use his legs more. Is he a top-ten quarterback? You, are you no. concerned? Stevie, are yes. you concerned that the team doesn't seem to like this guy? You know, we you, saw you know, the reports. You know, that you know, doesn't you're, concern you're, you. You're, you're starting to bother me. You're no. starting to bother me. No. So, so here's, here's Mad Dog Russo. No. I mean, he brings up integrity when he's talking about Barry Bonds yeah. and Mark McGuire and so said these guys. And now he's here with this stuff. He's talking about Major League Baseball. Don't you like this? Don't you like no. it? Who cares? It's not about what you like. Stephen A. It's about what gets it done. Do, what's your alternative if you don't have Stephen Kyle Stephen A., I feel like he's giving you pause. He's what? starting to convince you. When no. he brought up the injury history, yeah, saying not a top 10 guy, I, I feel on, like you're Molly, being swayed a little bit. Molly, when you look at some of these great quarterbacks in the league, I'm not telling you that Kyler Murray is there yet. I know better than that. What I am saying is this. He has done a good job for the Arizona Cardinals, particularly considering the lack, the absence of a veteran head coach that you saddled him with. If you were so concerned about these other things, then bring in a veteran that knows how to run a damn team. Cliff Kingsbury's learning on a job. I agree. Learning on a job. Fair. Fair. Kingsbury's not Paul Brown. You're a thousand percent right. You, you got that one right. You're hundred percent. Hundred percent. But Murray did not play well against Seattle late in the year. Murray was no. awful against the Rams. Murray was not great against Green Bay on the Thursday night game. He threw the interception. A.J. Green at the end of the ball game, and Rodgers beat him without Devontae Adams. He was he was terrible on Christmas night against the Colts. Terrible Christmas night against the Colts. There are reports that the team doesn't love him. He took himself out of a playoff game they because he was seven and zero to start the season and ten and two in week twelve. Fine. We just going ignore but, that. Indianapolis, Indianapolis, Seattle. When they could have won the division, they could have won the division against Seattle. Lost when the Niners beat the Rams. Took himself out of a playoff game, and now Steve wants to empty the bank and give him forty million a year. Who's not the even Seattle, a top ten quarterback? The Seattle game. The I Seattle game. I'm not doing the, that. The, this, excuse me. You're going to do it because guess what? The <laughs> Seattle game that you just brought up. Yeah, they lost that game. He had 30 points in that game. It ain't like it was Aaron Rodgers at Lambeau Field in a playoff game and couldn't put up more than 10. He had 30 points. They lost the game 38-30. I mean, we're just going to ignore that. Where was the okay. defense that day? How about that? All right. We're, we're leaving it there, Mad Dog. We're leaving it there. You know what? You know what, guys? At least we have the concept of debate down, right? What is this? Three shows in with Mad Dog? Guy, At least guy, we found points of dissension I mean, here. The integrity. The integrity. Okay, okay, okay. That they don't uh, like the guy? You know what? Really? Enough. I need a moment. I need a moment. Let's get in a commercial break. Still ahead on first take. Not at all. Not at all. Not a single person. Okay, this is the part, Mad Dog, that I find very interesting. No calls, no offers for Aaron well, Rodgers. That he's according gonna, to the GM. 
Yeah, he's not going to tell us that. You know, the last thing I need, I know Stephen A. did it last week. He's 1,000 percent right. Do I need a 43-minute interview uh, uh, telling me nothing on, on, on my channel? With my buddy McAfee, I mean, my God, please! You don't like those breaking? weekly visits? No, no, <laughs> oh, you don't like no, those. No, 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 but they've worked with their salary cap. If you trade them to Denver, they're going to have to give up a million pieces, including draft picks and wide receivers. Why? Why? Well, well, because it's the Green Bay Packers, Steve. And I tell so, you, well, here's here's why. Historian? You want to leave off those? You want to leave off those two losses? With Tampa in a championship game and how awful he played against San Francisco in that city, in that stadium, with that history, you want to bail? Uh, no way. I'm not leaving off that. I've got, I want to. I got. I got to make up for those two defeats and go to Denver, where they won with Elway and won with Peyton Manning. That's not going to do it. He's got to win another one in Green Bay. If I'm Rodgers, I don't sit there and even well, quibble about well, it. I'm staying. Adam stays. Let's go after it again. I don't necessarily disagree with your overall point, but I think that he needs to get another Super Bowl, not that he needs to do it in Green Bay. If he went somewhere else and got another Super Bowl, I don't think we're going to hold against him the fact that he wasn't wearing green and yellow front and, and playing at Lambeau Field. I don't believe that. That's number one. Number two, I will tell you, where we agree, but for different reasons. When you First of all, Pat McAfee is doing a hell of a job on your channel, by the way. Let's give Pat McAfee some love. I mean, we, we love Pat McAfee. I know I do, okay? Give him some love. Number two, when I think about Aaron Rodgers, here's what bothers me, because I've been accused of having a man crush on this because he's a bad man. He's something special. And I've always loved Aaron Rodgers, and I think as a talent, as a talent, I think he's the greatest talent that we've seen at the quarterback position ever. Okay, that's how much, that, that's a talent, all right? I agree. But you got to close the deal. And where I have a problem with him right now is that considering the moves that Green Bay is making and how it seems to coincide with the kind of things that Aaron Rodgers would want in order to stay in Green Bay, it's really bothersome to me that you're doing the 43-minute interviews. You're sitting around pondering, wondering what you want to do before you make a decision. I think those things are reserved for champions, meaning recent champions. Like, he is a champion, but that was 12 years ago. Not only have you not won a championship since, you haven't been to the Super Bowl since. And so when, this, when those kind of things happen, and tough, well, when we remember that, because nobody remembers that more than me about him, I also have to remember how you couldn't score 14 points against San Francisco in a divisional right. playoff game on your very own Lambeau Field with inclement weather, and you had a, a two weeks rest because San Francisco had beat up on Dallas the week before while you right. were home chilling out. I don't understand why we're sitting around here waiting for Aaron Rodgers to make his decision as if oh, it's going to shift the balance of power in the oh, NFL for years to come. That's yeah. a bit ridiculous. Wake me up when it's over. I, I, I there completely we go. agree with you. I agree with you on that one. Now, and I agree the second championship, wherever he gets it, for him personally, puts him on a higher level. But yep. there is a difference between going to Denver and winning there and staying in Green Bay. Green Bay now. That's one of the historic oh, franchises please. and winning That's, there. To me, it's, it's not, a little different. He almost owes that city and that fan base a little redemption for the last two series. No, two, last redemption? Two, last year. The, for this year, how for this year, not on, last year, on, when he on, lost to Tom on, Brady and Matt well, LaFleur took the ball out of his hands. Oh, no, 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 no. He on, don't know the how does he, yeah, how does he owe Green Bay anything? Well, I mean, did he play well in the last two games at all? Well, I thought that he Come played. On. I thought that he but played well against well, Look at the body of work. He's been there well, for years. Well, body of work is great. I understand that. If you're a Packer fan and he bails to go to Denver, 
off that loss to San Francisco where he stunk, you're going to be happy with him? Before, you're before be happy. this year, before he lost to San Francisco, before he lost to San Francisco, did you believe he owed Green Bay anything? I owed him another championship. Second oh, time. please. Second. I mean, as many years as they cost him that, you got you got to be crazy. Dude, as many years as they... Hey, just, hold on. I, let me get the last word here. When he needed help, when he needed offensive weapons, they drafted a quarterback. Oh, stop. Come on, oh, doggy. Come about on. these offensive weapons. Come Did he play on. well against... Did he play Molly? 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 Yes. yes. Did he play well against Tampa? He did not. No, absolutely not. He didn't not. play awful, did, though. I, we all, uh, he, he was right in the game. Came us, back in the right. second half. Stevie just gave us the rundown against San Francisco. He's awful. Those are, yeah. uh, is it about no, weapons or is it about his no, performance? No, no, no. We, we, know, we, we know that San Francisco has his number. Uh, That's true. Yeah, or at That's least Shanahan true. does. All right, Stevie, we got to go to break. <laughs> Still ahead on first take. Chris Mad Dog Bruce Chamberlain scored an NBA record 100 points for the Philadelphia Warriors. He also grabbed 25 rebounds in a win over the New York Knicks in Hershey, Pennsylvania, while playing the entire 48 minutes of the game. Present day now, another day, another loss for LeBron James and the Lakers, who have now lost 10 of their last 13. Not quite what the team envisioned in the offseason when they put together the elder statesmen of LeBron's super team. LeBron, undoubtedly one of the greatest ever play, has been leading his team in scoring, but not able to get the wins. Now, let's remember where Stephen A. ranks LeBron. That would be... Number two overall. Number two in the history of basketball. Yeah, that's all I was going to say. Yeah. yeah, number two yeah. overall, number two in the history yes. of basketball. Makes sense. I think most people do. Uh, Christopher, is LeBron the second best player ever? Well, there's a couple things about it, and I understand at the end of the day, he will be uh, on that second level. And, you know, listen, you got Kareem, you got uh, Russell, you got Will, you got Magic, you got a lot of them. So uh, he does, I understand that. Long-term career, it's going to be second. But in the peak of his career... And this is my, in my opinion now, peak of his career, I'll take Bird. If I got a series to win for my life, I got a year in his prime. When he won the three straight MVPs, this is in the year. It was 100 degrees. They couldn't move. It was so hot. Bird, 15 of 20 from the floor, didn't miss a free throw, 17 rebounds, 32 points, 17 boards. They ended up winning that series in seven games. Stephen A., I never saw Bird in a big series come up small. Never. Mm -hmm. well, I, saw I saw LeBron do it. Okay. Because against Dallas, the year the Mavericks beat them mm -hmm. with Nowitzki, yes. LeBron was awful, he was awful in that series. Okay. Absolutely horrendous. All right. All right. Okay. Bad. Okay. All right. So I'm taking Bird. Let me say this to you. That's awful, and you know it. Now, in the case of Larry Bird, here's where I'll throw you, because there's nothing to talk about with LeBron James as a shooter compared to Larry Bird. Larry Bird is a perimeter shooter. Larry Bird facing the basket. Larry Bird with his back to the basket. Larry Bird from the free throw line, a career 88% shooter from the free throw line when LeBron is hovering in the low 70s. There's nothing to talk about, with, about LeBron compared to Larry Bird as a shooter, and particularly earlier in his career. There's nothing to talk about LeBron compared to Larry Bird clutch-wise. But I would remind you, let's go through the list because I made sure to pull this stuff up. When we talk about Larry Bird, right, three-time NBA all-defensive second team, never an all-defensive first team, defensive support of basketball, Larry, LeBron James five times. All defensive NBA team, okay? That's number one. Number two, we look at the, the nine times first, you know, all NBA, all, all first team and stuff like that. You know LeBron's got him beat there. NBA, uh, uh, NBA all-star appearances, we know LeBron James got him beat there. NBA finals MVP, we know LeBron's got him beat there. NBA titles overall, we know LeBron's got him beat there. No, we not, oh, LeBron so was it? Four, well, no, I think, oh, that's right. You're right, four to three. That's four right. to three. Four to three. Right. That's right. I got this. I got this, dog. I forgot. Sit back, baby. It's all right. right. It's okay. It happens to the best of us. I would know. Here's the deal. At the end right. of the day, doggy, when you look at LeBron, at 6'9", being the specimen that he is, the reason why I give you the, sh the, the, the there's no question about the shooting and obviously that has something to do with clutch because when you can make shots and when you can make free throws, that goes a long way. But the game is 48 minutes. 
And when I think about LeBron and all the things that he brings to the table and all around versatility of his game, the fact of the matter that. is LeBron is number two all time. Why do but you yeah. think I have to hold on, hold on? Why do you think I have to put him ahead of Kareem? Kareem. It's a 19-time All-Star. He's got everybody beat number one. He's the all-time leading scorer in NBA history. He's a 19-time All-Star. He's a six-time champion. He's a six-time league MVP. And I still have LeBron number two and then Kareem number three because of the versatility and all the all-around abilities that LeBron brings to the game, which Bird and Kareem and those guys did not have. LeBron is number two all-time behind Michael Jeffrey Jordan. As usual, as usual, you missed two themes. The what? first one was... The assassin. The assassin. He was. Bird I is it. an assassin. I agree. LeBron misses, LeBron misses a little bit of that gene. I, I, no I, I didn't say that. I, I didn't deny that. Well, he, oh, well, he, he has You just said it. he was a shooter. He you got to put that in. You got to put that in there, too. Well, that's what you, I put, you didn't put that in there. He clutch. It said clutch. He didn't shoot it. Well, I, mean, that's I, not I, a, I didn't use the word assassin. Assassin so is a good word. You know it is. You know what I mean there. Again, let me ask you this. Go ahead. At the peak of their career, right. in an NBA final, right. at their peak, and right. you got to take one of those players to help you win a championship. Okay. I'm talking 86 series, 86 well, against the Rockets. This is I'm what talking you, 84 against the Lakers. It's important you hear this answer. It's important Are you, you hear this answer. Are you taking Bird or right, Jordan? Right. Uh, Bird right. or LeBron? And, and, and you're going to be appalled by the answer I'm about to give you. I take Bird for the last two minutes. I take LeBron for the first 46. Oh, no, no. You got, that's not fair. I, 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 what is Bird? What is, what is, I'm thinking what about is Bird, because, What is Bird? Scott Webbin? I mean, it's 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 the last two me. minutes. <laughs> hey, listen. Let me tell you why. Because I went to game six when LeBron was going up against Pierce, Garnett, and those boys at, at TD Bank Garden oh, with the floor. He, and he, had 40, he had 45 and 15. He had 45 and 15. He was a monster, okay? He just annihilated them. The reason why I say the first 46 matters is because it might not come down to the last two minutes with LeBron on his game because he'll destroy you beforehand. And that's the difference. You can't sit up there and just get, get your moment and ignore the game, doggy. I'm talking about the game, all right? You're making and it Bird, sound like Bird does nothing for 38, 40 minutes I, and he, he shows he, up he off the bench to LeBron. make a jump shot. He, he ain't LeBron. He's not LeBron now. He's not LeBron. And he was clutch it. without question. And a champion. I, I, we want to hey, move you on. know what? Uh, I'll start, let me go this here. Let me start here. Okay. okay. In the prime of their career, he's a better player than Magic. Prime Bird of their was career. A be- Bird was a better player than prime. Magic. Prime. Okay. In that see, 80, see, 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 81 see, see. to 87 I, I, period, listen, listen, he's listen, a better player I, than hey, Magic. Listen, listen. I'm not going to knock you for that because Bird was sensational. My flip side to this is that you're being very narrow-minded. You got to broaden. Here's the All deal. Right. Magic Johnson is the greatest point guard better, in the history of basketball. He had a better career than Bird. Wait, 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 wait. Career, I'm not talking about that for a second. Stay with me. He's a floor general. So Magic Johnson, the leadership, the floor generalship, et cetera, et cetera. He was never the scorer and the shooter Larry Bird Gentlemen, was. Gentlemen, we, we are know up, that. We are up against it, and we are out of time. To wrap up, let's make sure I have this right, right. Mad Dog. So it goes MJ, Larry, LeBron, correct? That would be – I might put Kareem ahead of LeBron. That would be my list. Now, okay. I, so understand you might have LeBron I understand it's controversial. It and is. I understand now they're going to kill me on the Twitter. How does Russo yes, they sit are. there and play? You know what? Yes, but they. I saw Bird play – so did he. Okay. I okay, saw okay. Bird so play every but, big game in his life. I saw fair, him play every fair. big series in his life, and he never, ever – Disappointed me, and I'm not even okay. a Celtic fan. Right. I We're saw LeBron time. play every big We're series in his life, we and he's go. disappointed me. We but Mad go. Dog, so you're saying LeBron third or fourth, correct? I'll put him third, make him happy, third. Okay. Listen, listen. He's trying to make the people he happy. He could be third if he wants to, but it better be because of Kareem and not Bird. He ain't coming behind he, he, well, Larry he, he Bird. Ju- he just told you for the last La- 10 minutes why. Larry right. Bird, right, baby. Right. Larry Bird. More first Bird. take. More first Larry take. Bird. No. <laughs> quick take. No.